We don't often talk about children's rights in Malaysia simply because we think that children don't know anything. There are three categories, and I like to talk about this, there are three categories of people and living things that do not get enough support or attention of the government simply because they are not voters. The first category, foreign workers. Second category, children, because children cannot vote. Third category, animals. Animals' welfare is severely neglected in this country. And because of that, this new government needs to take on this role and stop seeing things from just um, a political uh, point of view. It's not just about who can give you most votes, but really child rights is not about babysitting. Child rights is about preserving the future. When you have this kind of numbers uh, and the number of children who are abused every day, we, we almost can predict and foresee, if we don't put in the necessary intervention today, we can foresee what Malaysia is going to be like in 20 to 30 years down the road. We don't have to know rocket science to predict the future, but if we do not put in counselling, rehabilitation, and we don't put in the right measures to fill in the gaps in the, in the current weaknesses of the system, we are going to inherit a very, very scary uh, next generation of leaders in Malaysia. Already when we are talking about corruption, the, the latest report shows that majority of them are young people who believe in, in, in bribery. Uh, and we need to undo the, the harm caused to children because children practice or they grow up doing what they witness, what they see at home and also the people around them. So we have a lot of work to do uh, and I'm, I'm glad that this project will enable children who have been abused to be able to play in a safe environment again. Um, you have to help them create new memories. Uh, that's, that's what is important and therefore a, a, a safe home where you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of lighting. Um, uh, that's, they, they know that a lot of people have put in the hard work to help them create new memories. Uh, I think that's significant and, and that will be able to help them move on. Um, recently, we also launched the Child Sex Offenders Registry. As uh, child abuse could occur anywhere, be it in the hands of their own parents, in a nanny's home or in the children's shelter homes too. The Ministry has introduced a new system, Child Sex Offenders Registry, System Semakan Pesala Jenaya Sexual Tadap Kanak Kanak. And our Deputy Prime Minister, who is also the Minister of our uh, Women, Family and Community Development, had launched a system on the 26th of March and it came into force on the 1st of April. Unfortunately, despite all the promotions we have done online, uh, still very little people showed up to conduct those checks and those checks are free. Uh, so we encourage public to visit any state or district uh, JKM office and check by filling up a form if a potential babysitter or a school teacher has a prior record for child sexual offences. All that is required for the applicant to do is to submit a copy of the My Card and JKM will be able to inform if the owner of the MyCard has a record under the Child Act 2001 or not. And this check is free of charge. Uh, because in our database now, it's about 3,000 names. And this is based largely on Sexual, Offenders, uh, Sexual Offenses Against Children Act 2017. Uh, we are hoping to build uh, the database uh, in the years to come. But I really encourage all of you uh, to start using that system, start being proactive uh, because we put in a lot of hard work to, to ensure that this, this happens. So I, I appeal to all of you to encourage parents and people that you know to go and do those checks.